Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are interested in how I went from exclusively pumping to exclusively breastfeeding, go ahead and stay tuned. Alrighty guys, so I got um, a couple questions about pumping and breastfeeding from a few new moms. And I figured this would be a good video to do because I kind of just... <laughs> winged it as it pertained to breastfeeding with River. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm a mom of two. I have a toddler daughter named River. She is two years old and um, I have a newborn son and right now he's three, three months going on four months. So this is my second round of breastfeeding and with River, I was able to breastfeed her for 22 months. So I've been meaning to make a breastfeeding video just about that journey. But I think I'm gonna kinda combine them all together and if you guys have questions, just let me know. But I am gonna split this video up into a couple parts so that you guys know what to expect and then down below, I'll tell you what questions are answered in each section, so stay tuned. Okay, so the five areas that I'll be covering is my mindset around breastfeeding and nursing, why I chose to pump, um, pumping accessories that you need or the ones that I use in order to navigate from pumping to breastfeeding um, for my pumping schedule and then five, how did I transition? Okay, so one, mindset. So mindset is huge, huge, huge as it pertains to breastfeeding, nursing, pumping, feeding your child in general. Now, I'm going to say that um, I believe you need to do what's best for your child. Now, if you're here and you are a person who is adamant about breastfeeding, this is something that you want to do, that you desire to do, then this is the video for you because that's who I was. But if you don't necessarily care um, about how you feed your child or what you feed your child, not, not that you don't care, but you don't have a preference, then um, this may not be the video for you. This is for people who really do want to exclusively breastfeed um, their child and people who exclusively want to um, give their child only breast milk. Now, I have used formula um, in a situation before with Levi, and I'll tell you guys about that later. But I just want to give you that frame of mind so that you know where I stand and um, just how I went about this process because your mindset is what's going to keep you if this is what you want to do. OK, now at any point you may say I don't want to do it. And that's totally understandable. I get it. This second time around, y'all, I don't judge no mama for nothing. OK, <laughs> you do what you need to do. But if it's something that's really important to you, then this is how you navigate it. So um, I would say if you really desire to breastfeed, make it a priority. Say that I there is no. There is no other option if I have to supplement using formula or maybe donor breast milk in the meantime in order to accomplish my goal, then I'll do that. But my goal is to exclusively do that. Um, last time, that was my mindset. I could not even see myself giving River formula and I'm glad I didn't because my child River had over 20 plus food allergies, environmental allergies, and actually she was um, allergic to cow's milk, soy, and nuts. So I, oh my goodness, I would have been going through so many formulas that were um, dairy-based, cow milk-based, and then soy-based, and she probably would have broke out with all of them, and I, it probably would have made the situation more frustrating. So sticking to breast milk for her was the best thing. Um, but nonetheless, mindset. Um, yeah, you just have to Say, you know, no matter what, no no matter how hard it gets, this is something that I really want to do. And if I need to supplement in the meantime, I'll do that. But um, my goal is to get back to that. And if you have a mindset to say this is what I really want to do, then you'll be fine. Um, there, It will be challenging, honestly. Not for everyone. Now, I'll say in my experience, it was challenging, whether it was the pain of it or feeling like a cow <laughs> or just being exhausted you know, trying to pump because pumping really is another job um, along with caring for your child. So it's a lot that goes into it. But like I said, if you have the mindset that this is something I really want to do, you know, keep join Facebook groups that um, like people are exclusively nursing or exclusively um, pumping. That really helped me. It helped me to see that I am normal and, you know, uh, helped me think about like, it was just so many dynamics that it helped me with, especially as it pertains to how much should I be pumping. Um, and also at the same time, don't compare your journey to someone else's journey. 
as for me, there are some women who are over producers, like they just produce a lot of milk and um, they can get a lot out. They may have a strong letdown. They may be able to get like 10 ounces in one sitting in 10 minutes. As for me, it typically takes me and it happened with River as well, 30 minutes to get four ounces, you know, so there are times where it'll be less than that or in the middle of the night where I've got as much as 11 ounces um, within like 20 minutes. So it really varies, but um, don't compare your journey to someone else's. Just, you know, fill yourself with encouraging content that encourages you to keep going and doesn't shame you either way. Because in your journey, you may decide that, you know, I really don't want to do this. This is really too much for me. And that's okay, too. So that's what I have for our mindset. Number two, why did I choose to pump? Whew. Okay, so um, I have two different experiences, but they're pretty similar. So with River, I chose to pump because probably the third day, it was probably the day after I got home, I had an emergency C-section with her. And um, when I got home, I was so engorged and I didn't really know about engorgement. Um, and if you don't know about engorgement, it, it means like your breasts feel like to its capacity with milk and they can literally feel like bricks. Um, sometimes you can get clogged ducts from it. It can be very painful. Um, and then it's just a lot that goes into it. And for some people, if you start pumping too early, that will signal to your body that, oh, I need to make more and more milk. Um to accommodate this baby because breast milk and breastfeeding is a supply and demand thing. So the more you pump and the more you have the baby latch on, the more milk your body will produce. Now, there are other factors that um, go into it, but that is the main thing. So for some women, if they pump early, then they'll end up having an oversupply. So their boobs are always pretty much fill and gorge a lot or they'll just have a lot of milk in a huge supply. And they have like refrigerators worth of um, of milk. And me personally, that wasn't me. Um, but I had a close friend who was like that. So sometimes I'll be like, dang, like I wish I had more milk. But nonetheless, I chose to pump with River because um, I was so filled up and she wasn't eating as much as I needed her to drain my boobs. So I ended up pumping and I felt like a new woman. Like it was amazing. I, my boobs were lighter. I just felt like, I don't know, something lifted off of me. Like it was crazy. Like I just felt so much better after pumping and her latch was pretty painful. Um, she when she latched sometimes it caused my nipple to look like a lipstick so it was kind of like slanted um and it was kind of blistery so pumping helped to relieve my boobs i would use nipple cream and things like that um but it helped me to relieve and give me some time for my boobs to recoup um and give her a bottle in the meantime and that really really helped me so that's why i chose to pump with her now with levi this time around um i think i had a little bit more engorgement but his latch was way more painful and I had way more breast pain um from nursing with him than River when he latched for the first time it didn't hurt when he was latching in the hospital it didn't hurt barely but when he got home his latch was very very poor and me personally I think to this day he does have a tongue tie which one lactation consultant said that he had a minor one in and I took him to a pediatrician and one was like, no, he's totally fine. And another one was like, oh, yeah, I can snip it. I see a little bit like it may be an issue. So um, that was something that we never corrected and we just kind of went about. So I think if had we had we clipped his tongue, I think it may have been a different experience. But um, we collectively chose not to do that um, for our own reasons. But I am not opposed to it and actually... It would be nice, but now that his latch is perfect, is nothing is nothing to correct. So that's that's another thing too. So we decided not to, and then it ended up getting better. So that happens with um with kids. And River actually had a little, she had a lip tie. So that's when like your um there's a <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Everyone has a I think it's called pendulum. I don't know this little part, and it connects to your gums. But hers was connected, so it wouldn't allow her to um latch on with her top lip and for him his tongue um is really connected so he can put his tongue out a little bit but you really need uh, this is like tmi but in order to latch you kind of 
Sorry, guys, I can't believe I'm doing all these faces. You're taking the boot with your tongue. So if it doesn't come out as much, that can cause them to um, latch on like this. And you also get that um, lipstick shape on your boobs and it'll be very painful. Um, but it was so excruciatingly painful that I was like, I don't know if I would ever breastfeed again. I would cry. I would cringe. I had um, an anxiety attack one time trying to latch him because I knew the pain that I was going to experience from feeding him and I kept anticipating it. So I'm like pulling him away and like trying to latch him at the same time, crying at the same time. It really was traumatic, honestly. Um, and do I know why I had that nipple pain? I think is that him crying. So down my journey, I did some more research and I thought he had thrush because what was happening was there was like a white residue on my nipples to where I could kind of pick it out. And sometimes his tongue was white, but the pediatrician was like, sometimes you can wipe his tongue X, Y, and Z. And so we did it and it never really came back. But she said if you use probiotics, then it would help that. So it kind of helped that to go away. Um... And so thrush, I'm sorry. So going back to it, I think the nipple pain that I experienced and the breast pain that I experienced came from what I feel like was a mild case of thrush because after I had my probiotics, um, it kind of did clear up a lot more. Another reason is I think it was a hormonal imbalance because I had been seeing not only the breast pain, but also um, the mood fluctuations where I would literally wake up feeling sad. But in my mind, I was like, I have absolutely nothing to be sad about, but I feel so sad. And so the more I looked at those things um, in conglomeration with what I was feeling, it um, led to me realizing that it was probably a hormonal imbalance. So I did some other things to help me with that. And then the breast pain started to go away. So it was, it's crazy how these different things work. And maybe I can do like a more in-depth video about this because this is already long, but um. I chose the pump because of the excruciating pain that I was feeling from him. And I was like, well, I'm just going to have to thug it out because I don't like pumping. But I figured we also did not want to give him formula because he did try formula and he spit out through his nose and everything. When he tried it, I was like, mm -mm. and this is the hypogenic, hyperallergenic one. So I was like, yeah, we're probably not going to do that. So nonetheless, that is why I chose the pump. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about are the pumping accessories that you will need um, during this journey while you exclusively pumping. I will show you some of the things that um, I have, but I may do a more in-depth video about that. But the main things you need are um, a pump, <laughs> whether you do a manual or an electric pump where you actually plug up to a wall or a hands-free one where you can actually be mobile with it. You need um, storage bags or... Um, pumping bottle like bottle storage bags um some people choose to do plastic some people choose to do glass um i have plastic bottles so i use that also you need for me i use a nursing bra i don't know how people pump without nursing bras but that really helped me or nursing tank tops if you have a um hands-free mobile pump i use Medela brand um as far as the pump and the nursing bra as well. Um, you will need some nipple cream, most likely. There are a lot of brands that make some. My favorite are Modella and Lansino. Um, What else? A nursing cover if you want to. Snacks. You need to eat a lot. And water. You need to drink a lot. Um, and it's just going to help you produce more milk. And I'm actually like doing pretty bad right now <laughs> on it but those are some of the things you need and I think I might make a separate video on what pumping looks like to me um but yeah if you have all of those things it should be fine it's not a lot it sounds like a lot but it's not a lot it's like natural things that you need I don't I'm not really extra as it pertains to um you know unnecessary like added bonus stuff I just have the basic necessities of what I think you should need and it has gotten me through um also if you want to be a little bit mobile and be out the house and do things if you are exclusively nursing you definitely want a breast milk bag and ice packs um to keep your milk cool if you need to but um if you do pump or if you don't know about this 
breast pump milk can like after you express it it can stay out for up to four hours i believe and you can refrigerate it for i believe three to four days and then if you were to thaw it from the refrigerator it could last for um if you transition it from the freezer to the refrigerator i believe it lasts for like 24 to 48 hours and if you transition it from like the the refrigerator and you warm up a bottle of milk it lasts for an hour or two so those are things to consider when you're pumping because you want to know like okay once i pump this milk if you have an oversupply what should you do with it next and you really need to understand your child's way of eating their schedule um because then you'll be able to map out how much should i put in the fridge how much should i keep out how much should i put in the freezer um so yes that is important <laughs> And I will actually link below a blog post of the things that I use and some links on how you can get those things for you. So just look down below. I'll put like pumping accessories needed or something like that. Um, it's a blog post and it'll give you all the links for that. So yeah, question is, what was my schedule with pumping? What was my pumping schedule? So when I decided in the very beginning to exclusively pump, meaning that's all I did, I did not nurse, um, I pumped every three hours. At that point, honestly, I was just pumping when I felt like it. It may have been three and a half or four hours. I didn't really have a schedule until I saw my supply dip um, and it went to like, usually I would pump, you know, up to 20, 25 minutes. And I would get about four ounces, but I had pump for like the first 10 minutes and I only had like an ounce altogether. And I realized that my supply was dipping. Um, and so I was like, oh my goodness. So I knew it was a supply and demand issue. So I was like, okay, let me be pretty consistent, more consistent and strict with my schedule of pumping every three hours. So that's when I, I did that. So um, around the clock, even throughout the night, because at the time when he was, you know, a newborn, not even a month yet, of course, he's not sleeping through the night yet. So he woke up about every three hours or so. And so I would have to pump. And because that was his only way of eating, I would have to make sure I had a bottle for him or up before him so that I could pump and give him a bottle um, so that he can go back to sleep for the night. So I was pretty exhausted, but that was a schedule that I kept. Sometimes I may have gone over to four hours if he was sleeping well, but I always tried to make sure I get up within a reasonable time and up before he started stirring so that I could have a bottle. But typically if I pumped a bottle, um, so for some reason, I would have a bottle pumped as he was going to bed. I think I had one bottle ahead of time <laughs> to where I would have a bottle um, already in the refrigerator. So for his first feed and when he woke up, he had that bottle. And then once he went back down, that's when I pumped and went back to sleep. So I always had a bottle ready when he was about to wake up and then pump after I fed him. So I was exhausted. I really was. Um, but it worked for me. Now, what happened to where we transitioned is when he started sleeping longer. So he had like a six hour stretch one time and I had like, like my boobs were getting pretty full. So I was able to pump two bottles, I believe at that time and, um, keep going. And so I had built somewhat of a stash to where like, if I was pumping every three hours and he was hungry before I pumped again, I had enough milk to do that. And I know sometimes that's not easy with River. I don't think I was ever really able to do that. Um, but yeah, so I was doing that. And yeah, so throughout the night, my pumping schedule was like, let me get as much sleep as I can because he already had a bottle ready for when he woke up. So I'm gonna sleep as long as his longest stretches, I'll sleep during that time, even if it's six or seven hours. And then after I feed him, I'll pump and go back to sleep. So um, throughout the night, I wasn't doing every three hours at that point. And then eventually he started sleeping for 12 hours and I would wake up around 5 a.m and pump so I would sleep from 10 to 5 pump and then either go back to bed or work on business or do whatever so I was doing that and then throughout the day pumping 
Now, what changed was, and I guess we'll go into the next session, was how did I transition? What changed, and I should have said this before, was I, mindset-wise, I didn't think in the beginning that I would ever be able to exclusively breastfeed him, mainly because of the pain. It was it was just so much more worse than Rivers, and um, he started to eat more, <laughs> and he wanted to eat more, more milk, and in quicker intervals, so... Um, say if he had a bottle, he would be good for like two and a half hours, three hours. By that time, I would have pumped the bottle and he'll be ready to eat again. But what was happening was he was cluster feeding. So when they cluster feed, they want to eat um, more milk and they probably want to eat it in a quicker interval as well. So if your child was normally eating every two and a half hours or so, maybe they want to eat every hour and a half. And guess what? My I couldn't catch up with it. Eventually, he was drinking all of the refrigerated milk that I had. And I went to keep a couple frozen bags that I had. And it was just like, OK, now during this time, every week, I made it a point to make sure he attempted to latch one to three times a week. So it was typically at night because it was easier to feed him when my boobs were full. It was less painful. Um, so I would try to latch him instead of giving him a bottle um so throughout this whole sorry there was a phone call but yeah so throughout this time from him being a couple days old to you know three months I'm making sure that I attempt to latch him every single week even if I still have the anxiety because I did in the beginning I was like man this is about to hurt but there may be a time where I need you to nurse where, you know, we're out and I don't have a bottle for you or whatever. I don't want you to forget how to nurse. That was my biggest thing. I don't want you to forget how to nurse. I want you to know that this may be an option. In the beginning, I didn't think it would happen, but I still pushed myself to latch him. And um, every week, um, it gradually, I mean, gradually got better. <laughs> Sometimes it was just like, I don't even know why I still try to do this, but I was persistent because I didn't want to give him formula. I didn't want to supplement. Um, and yeah, so I just, I did it even if it hurt. So it came to a point when he was about two months or yeah, two months, two months and a week or so where he started cluster feeding and I didn't have any more milk in the fridge to like catch up, you know, if I was pumping and he needed to eat, you know, there was a, a bottle there. It ran out. So I was like, well, now you got a nurse. So then what I was doing was I would pump as much as I could um, up until like 4 p.m. And then I know that he would eat like every hour, every hour and a half. And he, if he was on the boobs, I was like, okay, that's fine. From four to nine, that can hold me over until you have a nighttime bottle. So what I was doing was I would actually, um, during this time when I decided that, okay, I'm going to exclusively breastfeed or I need to transition because this isn't working um, because he wants more food and I'm not pumping enough for that. Um, so I would pump, you know, at 5 a.m. And during that time, I would get like two five ounce bottles. Sometimes it would be a four ounce and a five ounce bottle. But typically it would be that. And around that time, he was drinking five ounces. Um, so I would let him have that morning five ounce bottle. And then um, I would pump again. And that will give me another four or five ounces. And then, you know, I'll pump if I can. But if not, if he's hungry, then I'll latch him. And then eventually I got to a place where I only did a 5 a.m. pump session so that I could get all of that milk out. Because I personally believe in having some kind of stash in the event that I do want to go somewhere, you know, I want to go get my nails done and, you know, not having to have him with me in order to do that. So that is why I pump. So, I mean, some people would say I don't exclusively breastfeed, but I still, I exclusively breastfeed because I give him a, a morning bottle um, of that milk only because I'm like, oh, you had a long stretch. Like he sleeps 12 hours. So I just give him a bottle and he's really satisfied. Um, and then after that, I nurse him throughout the day. And at night, I'll give him a nighttime bottle just because I know he's going to be sleeping for 12 hours. Now, yes, I have nursed him to sleep and he slept the same 12 hours. So um, I actually could really exclusively, 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 like no bottles at all if I wanted to. But I still want him to get 
um yeah I, I don't mind giving him that but if i needed to build up my stash i would take those 5 a.m bottles and just put them in the freezer um just so that i always have back backup milk in the event that i don't do that and i think that's what happened with river i was like i'm a stay-at-home mom why am i still pumping and giving him these bottles when he's with me and i can use these bottles for when you know i need jared to watch him or babysitter what have you so that is my journey um i will be making a blog about this as well so that'll be a little bit more coherent because sometimes writing things down and seeing it um if you're a visual learner that may help you um i love to talk i also love to write so i know that you know either or may help you and it'll give you links and i can actually write out the schedule as to what i was doing so nonetheless i hope that helped you guys and if you have any questions please 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 let me know um i can make more videos about like dealing with the breast pain what to do um different things that i use to ease the pain which I think that sounds like a good good video. <laughs> and yeah, so if you guys have questions, let me know. I love you guys and I love talking about this kind of stuff. I love talking about motherhood, breastfeeding, all of that stuff because it was a journey and I feel like, you know, if I could learn some things to make it better and easier, um, I'm going to do that. And the things that I've learned, I, I just love sharing it and it has helped a couple people. So anyway, I'm rambling. Love you guys. See you later. Bye.